Let me welcome all the participants uh, to this uh, Chetana series, which is uh, an online lecture series that uh, UGC has started to share uh, uh, the best practices uh, in institutions across the country. We invite experts to explain to us about the best practices that can be adopted in our higher educational institutions. In this uh, Zoom platform, uh, many vice chancellors from across the country have joined. And this lecture is also being uh, live streamed on our uh, UGC social media platforms. Uh, later also these lectures can be watched. Let me extend a warm welcome to Dr. Uh, Indrajit uh, Bhattacharya, who is uh, the director of uh, uh, NABET in Quality Council of India. Friends, you know that uh, in national education policy, there is a great emphasis on introducing technology, not just only in, in, in education, but also in the governance of our institutions. And in the recent past, artificial intelligence has become uh, an important uh, technological tool uh, that is being used uh, in higher education. Recently, you might have heard about uh, a group of uh, scientists from MIT who have designed an algorithm based on AI, uh, which can solve problems, uh, which can design problems on its own. So there is a lot of research that is being done on the applications of AI in the edtech tools. But um, however, awareness about these edtech tools and their application, not only in education, but also in the governance of our, our institutes um, needs to be increased. And that's the reason why we have called uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, who is an expert in this area, to share some of his ideas and also to let us know how by bringing uh, AI tools uh, we can transform the pedagogical approaches and uh, increase the learning outcomes of our uh, students because ultimately our education has to be based on the learning outcomes. So uh, in this talk, uh, we will also get to know about uh, how to enhance the educational services um, while becoming cyber resilient. So um, I invite uh, Dr. Bhattacharya to briefly tell us about these recent developments. And uh, after the lecture, we will also have the opportunity to have a question answer session so that some of your suggestions um, uh, can be taken. And uh, if you have some doubts, they can also be addressed. So with those comments, I invite uh, Dr. Bhattacharya uh, to make his presentation. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jagdish Kumarji, uh, Chairman UGC, for giving me this opportunity for um, uh, talking to this learned audience. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, excellently in your briefing session, uh, this is going to be of using the EdTech tools for evaluating the higher education. Let me take you through my slides. I will just share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is visible. Just a minute. Can you see the full screen? Yes, we can see it. OK. So my topic of today is the maturity assessment model of EdTech tools for evaluating the higher education institutions for driving outcome-based education. So I come from the National Accreditation Board for Education and Training under the Quality Council of India.
just a minute. It's not going to the next slide. Okay, so Quality Council of India was set up in 1997 by the government of India with Asochan, CII, and FIKI as a non profit autonomous body. Uh, it is uh, under the Department of Promotion of Industrial Policy and Internal Trade under the Ministry of Commerce as the nodal point. It was established as the uh, national accreditation body to do a quality movement by undertaking the national quality campaign. If you see on the right hand side, this is our leadership with the chairman, Mr. Adil Zainul Bhai. He's an alumnus of IIT Delhi and uh, IIT Bombay and a Harvard Business School. He has 34 years of experience in McKinsey as MD, and he was nominated by the Honorable Prime Minister of India. Incidentally, he's also the chairman of the Capacity Building Commission, which is currently taking care of the uh, assessments of the uh, uh, capacity building training centers for over 800 training institutes, which does the training of IAS uh, uh, professionals. So uh, under this, about uh, uh, the maturity assessment model, it has been conceived on those lines. And uh, uh, currently, the uh, uh, sample study is going on uh, on those uh, uh, metrics. And our Secretary General is Dr. R. P. Singh. He is the alumnus of BHU Western University, Canada, and he's been appointed by the Secretary, uh, uh, by the Honorable Minister of Commerce in 2014. So QCI gets nominated by various central ministries and departments and state governments for various projects due to its role in quality and accreditation. Uh, how do I uh, remove the uh, top slider it is appearing on this? Any idea? Okay, uh, this is the schematic of the Quality Council of India organization structure. It has uh, several accreditation bodies and quality promotion, as well as special project group. The accreditation bodies are the National Accreditation Certification Body, NABCB, the National Accreditation for Healthcare Providers, NABH, the National Accreditation Board for Laboratories, NABL, and I come from this National Accreditation Board for Education and Training. Under the quality promotion, we have the National Board for Quality Promotion, and under the special project group, we have the PPID, which is Project Implementation Division, the PAD Division, which is Project Documentation Division, and the Zero Effect, Zero Defect Division Z, which uh, it takes care of the MSME sector. If we talk about the Quality Council of India, we are mandated to do the assessments and evaluation as well as accreditation of education and training institutions in the skill arena. Uh, under the formal education excellence division, we have the accreditation of schools, the quality improvement projects, the government projects, and the workshops and seminars under the environment division. We uh, take care of the environment impact consultant organizations accreditation, the groundwater consultant divisions, as well as the coal and the mining organizations. In the skill training service divisions, we have the accreditation of consultant organization, the learning service providers and projects. And in the MSME division, we have the Lean Manufacturing Competitive Scheme. Uh, if we look at what has happened in the transformation in education and the EdTech tools uh, in the pre-COVID and the post-COVID era, you would see that in pre-COVID, we had the monopoly of higher education institutions, whereas in the post-COVID, we had the rise of EdTech startups. We had barriers on learning on the COVID-19 uh, during the peak of COVID area and the removal of barriers in the post-COVID area. I will come, up, come to you about the barriers. The travel cost and the living cost, uh, which has now become post-COVID as remote learning. Limited availability of faculty, which has 
through the digital learning, there was no limit on classroom and faculty availability. A full-time commitment was seen uh, on the pre-COVID days. And with the flexible learning, we have come overcome all that uh, limitation. The lecture-based teaching with handwritten notes and assignments, what, what we saw before, and the learning management systems with recorded lectures, the readings and assignments was what we have seen, what we are seeing now. The assessments based were on retention ability, and now we have the application-based assign assignments. So in the ed tech market size is around 2 billion, being the third most funded sector, raising over 4.7 billion USD. The seven ed tech unicorns, which, we, which India saw, is uh, leading with Baiju's, Un Academy, Upgrad, Eruditus, Vedantu, Lead, Physicswala. An exponential rise of use of massive open online contents was seen, and 9,000 ed tech startups has been seen with 743 million internet sub subscribers and 700 million smartphones in 2022-2020. So if we look at the next generation scaled online degree programs, pre-COVID we had correspondence and weekend degrees for the working professionals. During COVID, it was complete remote learning through video conferencing around the world. And post-COVID, we have this scenario of next-gen fully online degrees scaled for millions of learners, leveraging data from millions of users and billions of data points, and usage of AI ML for automated assignments and adaptive content. UGC, the Distance Education Bureau, has approved certain higher education institutes to start full-fledged online programs without the prior approval of UGC. So what is AI? So if we talk about artificial intelligence, this is a slide from the NEGD, National E-Governance Division, under the Ministry of IT. AI enables machines to learn from experience with data and perform cognitive functions associated with human mind with the overarching discipline of AI is a form of intelligence, a type of technology, and the field of study. So we are all going through the narrow AI area where the focused one on one specific task with moving on, AI is moving on to the general intelligence, where AI intelligence that can handle any task in any domain. If you look at the subsets of artificial intelligence, it's a program that can sense, reason, act, and adapt. The subset of which is the machine learning, where algorithm whose performance improves as exposed to more data over time. And if you look at deep learning, it is again a subset of machine learning and it has, it has been framed as per the uh, human mind's artificial neural networks. If we talk about the domains of AI research, we have machine learning under which we have the supervised learning, the unsupervised learning, and the reinforcement learning. In deep learning, we have the computer vision, and under the natural language processing, we have text analysis and speech analysis. The ML ops, machine learning ops, the AI ops, explainable AI, and ethics. So, if you talk about the AI and education, why AI is required to be brought in in education? Because it will serve the purpose of education for all, the premise of uh, having education extended to all, and innovate teaching learning practices accelerate progress towards SDG 4, which talks about inclusion and equity, as well as promote research. So the three areas of AI and education are AI education, AI in education, and AI for education. So we talk about AI education. Intel with CBSC currently, since 2019, have brought in, in the syllabus of schools from class ninth onwards teaching of AI in education. And some of the private sectors have brought in even in the lower sec classes. So I will be talking about AI in education and AI for education in my subsequent slides. So if we talk about AI for education, as chairman mentioned in the opening remarks, it addresses to the students, to the teachers, as well as the school management. So we talk about the students, it can give content on demand, 
and make learning accessible as well as digitalize learning materials. For teachers, it is in student management and use uh, online teaching, video conferencing, screen sharing and annotation, having OCR for exam and exercise grading and real-time collaboration, as well as preparing uh, pre auto preparation of teaching notes, uh, ensure that there, there is a, uh, it can facilitate cheating recognition. That's uh, that the, in the examinations, uh, there is no cheating that happens as well as student attendance tracking. In the school management, it can facilitate student management, teacher management, do video recording, broadcasting, interactive teaching learning, data security, technology teaching, as well as uh, technology teaching on parental engagement, uh, screen sharing annotation, campus surveillance, disruptive behavior detection. So AI for learning and learning assessment, education management and delivery empowers teaching and teachers and development of values and skills for life and work in the AI era and offering lifelong learning opportunities for all. So this is a slide which shows AI in higher education, current status looking at the future. So it has student successes, having student recognition, student retention, student completion and alumni engagement, teaching and learning in the area of teaching and learning. It talks about learning management, collaborative learning, future skills, ready skills, learning spaces. And in the academic research talks about research enablement, collaborative research, high performance computing and research deployment blueprints in the secure and connected campus talks about data sharing, institutional operations, security management and facilities management. So this is a slide which shows the dimensions of higher education digital capability framework. It is a creative common slide. You can go onto the net and search for it. It's, it has 70 capabilities in the digital domain. 16 domains and four dimensions. I will read the dimensions, which is demand and discovery, learning design, learner experience, and work and lifelong learning. So this was a slide from the Holon IQ, which talks about universities of all sizes establishing academic partnerships on PPP with the edtech companies in OECD countries, which is US and European countries. So if you see, look, look at looking at this slide, this is an exponential growth which is happening in the Western world. And in, if you look at the Indian scenario, uh, this is a slide from KPMG and RBSA advisors, which talks about 2022 in the K-12 segment, it had a growth of $1,700 million. And in the post K-12, that is higher education segment, $1,765 million is projected in 2022, current year. If you talk about the total edtech market in million dollars by 2032, it is showing a $30 billion by 2032. But if you look at Baiju's turnover in March 2022, it is showing $28 billion. So obviously, this is very highly underrated. And there is a huge growth segment uh, with 26% surge in out-of-pocket expenditure on ex education between 2014 to 2018. So these are some of the key ed tech tools in teaching learning. This is just a sample with uh, showing the online certification like Coursera, Upgrad, Eruditas, Simply Learn, Jigsaw, etc. And the skill development, we have dispersed interview bait, quizzes, Erudeka, and Creo. In enterprise solution, we had Liquid, Class Plus, 4DN, et cetera. These are some of the edtech tools sample which has been shown. What are the key drivers of edtech in India? So in the test preparation, we have large addressable markets, price advantage over offline counterparts, availability of known players. On the online certification area, we have partnerships with known universities and colleges happening, conveniences and popularity amongst working professionals, NPTEL and MOOCs promotion. In the K-12, we have parents' propensity to pay price advantage over offline counterparts, increasing competitiveness amongst children, and government's keen interest and initiative in promoting the Swayam and Diksha platform. In the skill development, we have convenience, 
growing interest in upskilling and price advantage. On the entrepreneurship and enterprise solution we need for product offerings and require for remote workplace management tools. So we have the flipped classroom approach, which is talks about the faculty as a facilitator, where the students are encouraged to learn from by watching short video lectures or tutorials online and come to the classroom and complete the activities as a group and projects and other exercise. This is also called as digital hybrid or blended learning approach. So the Ministry of Education in 2022 has uh, is working out on EdTech regulation, uh, wherein the EdTech in February 2022 are, are estimated at 4,500. Today, if you look up in the net, the startups in India are about 9,000, it's almost doubled. You can see the online platforms, the mobile apps are the new learning formats, improving both access to quality of education across all domains and skills. UGC uh, has passed class 12th, will be able to enroll in digital university, boosting India's degree enrollments for 18 to 23 year olds. Also working on adding a clause about a, a collaboration with edtech companies. The adding of education institutes will be able to collaborate with edtech companies to offer programs to students through their platform. So UGC, AICT, and Department of Education begins digital education for, uh, university process in 6th April. Uh, the key features are no caps on seats, envisaging a gross enrollment ratio of 50%, which will combat the problem of limited seats in higher education. In the higher education, accessible to all, removing the learning and quality education will be made available to all students in India, irrespective of the location and language. The faculty development and more opportunities bridging the gap in faculty development and enrollment of SEDGs, that is social economic disadvantage groups, employability and enhancing skills and more. And digital learning, as I said, is the way forward in the classroom. So this is the uh, schematic which shows the three ways in which open distributed learning can be provided in higher education, which is uh, if you look at the uh, Y axis, it can be fully online or fully offline, digitally supported, internet supported and internet dependent in between. On the X axis, it can be campus based, blended or hybrid learning and remote learning. So you can have the three scenarios, which is the A, which is distance or digitally supported, B, which is distance or fully online, and C, which is campus based or fully online. So based on your scenario, uh, one can choose the three options shown here in the slide. So the edtech tools in higher education, what can it do? It can supplement with powerful tools used inside the live classrooms with students as well as students accessing the class remotely, both synchronously as well as asynchronously. The edtech integration can be engaging the students in content, promote deeper learning, keep track of learning in the classroom and provide timely feedback by incorporating formative or cumulative assessments. And outside the classroom, it can also give text, audios, images, and animations, and streamline streaming videos to deliver content and enhance deeper learning. For immersive learning techniques using gamification and use of augmented reality AR, VR, and extended reality techniques. Just talking about gamification, I want to take an example of a, a platform which is called Walk which was Wikipedia of knowledge, which I came across by an entrepreneur from Sweden who has uh, uh, enabled five lakh questions on Wikipedia. And this was put across and tested in South of Indian schools. And there was an enormous response and enormous enhancement of learning of uh, out learning outcomes were seen uh, by this entrepreneur. So obviously gamification and augmented reality can enhance the learning outcomes. The benefits of edtech tools more can be seen with increased student engagement in learning, enhanced student and student interaction, teacher and student interaction, improved language affinity and improvement of learning pace, 
improved student learning outcomes, enhanced institutional reputation, more flexible teaching and learning environment, more amenable for self and continuous learning, better opportunities for experiential learning. So all these which I've shown the benefits, uh, I'm not taking the names of the tools because it is not correct for me to take the names of the tools, but these are taken from places where those uh, uh, VCs, the venture capitalists who have invested in these uh, ed tech tools, they have done research to find out the how much of this has happened, quantification of that. Yes. So the further benefits of ed tech tools are facilities, it facilitates students and in, with instruction and practice to quality digital content, enables students to revisit the lectures easily by better understanding, promotes immediate educator-student interactions and feedback, enables tracking and learning progress, adjust teaching strategies according to the student's response, supplements traditional tech teaching, and gives a stimulus to the group or a whole class dis discussions, catalyzes student motivation and engagement, inculcates higher order thinking through creativity exercise, and creates opportunities for individualized path and pace for students through remediation, practice, and assist in record keeping. Further, it facilitates professional learning objectives by offering online tools. I was given a demonstration of the same. Opportunity for collaboration at a distance. Individual students work together virtually in intellectual endeavor as a learning practice. Increase flexibility, as you all know, anytime, anywhere, and letting students learn without the barriers of time and location. An indicator for early warning systems. So as I said, AI-driven edtech tool can be a indicator for giving an early warning system for uh, showing up a student who is about to drop out. Further, a multitude of real world skills as research skills, self-learning, self-engagement, better decision making, offering a larger sense of responsibility as well as computer literacy. There was a research which was done by Microsoft Research in collaboration with the Times Higher Education Division to see the benefits of AI and its current status in higher education. What was seen as that as is the following. The minority of universities currently have an AI strategy, but most plan to develop one. Universities find it difficult to recruit and retain staff, but able to teach and research in AI. AI will increase employers' demand for university graduates and will not lead to university closures. AI will be able to assess students provide feedback and generate a test scientific hypothesis at least as, as well as human scan. But the universities will not cut teaching, research, or administration staff and may even recruit more. Most of the survey respondents agreed that the AI will complement rather than replace human scientific, scientific input, a true human machine collaboration resulting in a powerful combination of skills. So you can put your uh, skepticism at, at rest. Um, thinking that you might not be require humans if AI come over. So uh, the NEP 2020 talks about EdTech and recommends EdTech having all these areas with light but tight governance, foundational li literacy for all, early childhood education, online platform for CPD of teachers, which is continuous professional development of teachers, enable gross enrollment rate to 100% through student tracking, uh, ensures standards for e-learning and teaching, have an interactive and immersive content, address the digital divide, and have AI-based TCC degree progress card, and uh, facilitate the NETF, which is National Education Tech Forum, which is coming up in my next slide. So this is the Net NETF framework, which is an integration of teaching learning, evaluation, teacher preparation and professional development, educational access, educational planning, educational management, and educational administration, which is admissions, attendance, and assessment. With AI having a, such an important role in the education sector, government through this National Digital Education Architecture, NDR, is uh, investing heavily on AI to put this together so that the students, the parents, 
the com community member, the teacher, and, and, and the administrator are closely linked. This is the recent development which has happened after the two years completion of uh, NEP 2020 uh, with the Academic Bank of Credit kicking in and the National Academic Depository facilitating the flexibility to learners as a part of NEP 2020, wherein the credits get de deposited in, in a institution A gets transferred uh, in the MIT portal of the National Academic Depository, NAD, and this can be redeemed by institution B once the student wants to continue his studies. So this uh, has kicked in with uh, uh, Gazette notification happening on this. About 20 institutions are there. So we are all, uh, I mean, the government encourages all the institutions to come on this platform. So further benefits of AI edtech tools proven to drive innovation-based learning and furtherance of innovation thinking. For various AI labs in higher education institutes, facilitate standard development kits, SDKs for data labeling, self-hosted platform for deep learning application, hierarchical attribute tag tagging, automated labeling, providing expert data annotators, and popular frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, et cetera, for machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, natural language processing, and AI model inference platform besides access to industry-led AI research projects in AI model training platform. As you know, a lot of emphasis has been given on research by NEP 2020. So this is a ITS model, which is the intelligent tutoring system or adaptive learning model, wherein the, uh, uh, the um, content delivery is given based on the capability of the student. It shows that tailored instructions are given to the student uh, uh, wherein the capability of the students is judged and the data is fed back and uh, the knowledge domain and the teaching strategies are tweaked and tailored as per the capability of the student. This is called as the intelligent tutoring system or adaptive learning. This is the Venn diagram which shows what goes between AI and education. That is, it is an uh, amalgamation of computer science, psychology, and education. In computer science, we have AI, the multimedia, and the internet. In psychology, you have the cognitive science, developmental psychology, and education. These three elements are put together to uh, arrive at the intelligent tutoring system. This is a slide which shows uh, the adapt from uh, the degree of adapt or degree of automation. This has been conceived by the adaptive learning lab um, in Netherlands, which shows how the automation of learning happens from teacher only environment to full automation. In the teacher only environment on the left hand side, the teacher controls fully uh, like it is in the classroom. And the next one where with, which, is, which is the teacher assisted one, that is the first step where teachers has, has full control and the technology provides supportive information. The, in the partial automation environment, technology controls specific tasks and teacher monitors technology. In the conditional automation, we have technology controlling broader sets of tasks and teacher monitors incidentally, but can resume control at all times. In the higher automation, we have technology requests teacher control Technology controls most tasks automatically and teacher controls and monitors in not required for specific tasks. In the full automation, the technology controls all tasks automatically. So this is the uh, progression which has been shown of degree of automation. Currently, the OECD country is on the step one, that is teacher assisted technology provides supportive information. This is an environment which has been shown for AI in the manufacturing, a case study, where implementing industrial internet of things in manufacturing, which can yield a profit or EBITDA of four to 5% improvement in plant in the elements of real-time monitoring of the plant equipments, the advanced predictive analytics, the conditional-based monitoring, the process traceability, and the energy efficiency. So it can improve the yield by four to 5%. This has been recorded 
uh, by the industry uh, through a, this is a slide taken from CII masterclass in 2020. In the AI ML technique in action, what are the typical in algorithms which are being used for developing the various solutions? You have the tree-based ensemble, the time series, the classification, the clustering, regression, neural nets, and ARM. You can see the various technologies and the various solutions which are being used in each of the algorithm used. So how does one automate? So this is a tool which automates the selection of the algorithm through data lakes and synthetic data generation, going to data pre-process, to data labeling, doing the quality analysis, the data management, the model training, model optimization, and retraining. So this is just a illustration of how AI can be used in research. So uh, Nabit, uh, at our end had uh, conceived this maturity assessment model for adoption of edtech tools in higher education. These were the elements, five elements, which is intelligent tutoring system, the education management information system, the research-based learning, degree of automation, and trust, which has elements of IT security, ethics and standards, accountability, explainability, transparency, and privacy. So these were the weightages which were conceived, uh, which is on the right-hand side. That is for the first one, 20%. The second one, EMI is again 20%. On the research-based learning, as we talked about, which is the highest, is 30%. The degree of automation, 15 And on the trust element, as 15%. So the same was, a survey was done from December 2021 to 2022 on, the, on these weightages. And a total respondents of 61 is given in this diagram. Uh, which is, uh, uh, we had 19 colleges, uh, 17 edtech providers, and 25 universities which who responded. And, uh, uh, and majority of them agreed for the weightages of research-based learning to be the highest, which is about 50. So these are the, showing the survey with key respondents who responded to the survey. If you see, even QS, also responded from the edtech companies. On the institutional front, these were the respondents. You have leading universities and colleges who responded to the survey, agreeing to the fact that the research should be given the highest importance. These are the some of the AI ecosystem supporters in India, with India AI, Niti Aayog, NEGD, Atal Tinkering Labs, Automation AI, as as well as the All India Council for Robotics and Automation, ITRA, and UGC, AICT, and CBC, and many more. So this is again a sample of the current AI institutes in India. You can see the leading institutions who have the uh, supported AI as well as AI training besides AI labs in place. So this study got published in this book as Maturity Assessment Model for Evaluation of EdTech Tools in IGI Publications USA, uh, edited by authors from IIT Goa and IIIT Bangalore. So I would like your feedback on this, uh, whatever I have presented. Uh, this is the feedback link, which is bit.ly slash three U capital F capital Q W I F. So you would like to reflect on the feedback of whatever I have presented. So this is a slide from UNESCO 2022 recent slide, which shows digitalization and digital transformation of education. So, so far in the lowest of the pyramid, you have the digitization of information, which is scanning of paper textbooks. We move on to digitalization of existing procedure that is putting the uh, digital text books on interactive multimedia platforms, having the learning, learning LMS, learning management systems in place, and uh, having the material, the learning material on the cloud. We talk about digitalization, where this, in this journey, I think uh, most of the uh, universities and colleges are on this digitalization platform. And once we adopt AI, 
in digitalization. We move on to the digital transformation platform, which is uh, the digital disruptions will start taking place and decentralization of digital private governance will happen with enabling humanistic needs and sovereignty of states. This is the curve, which is the technological evolution through ages that, has that is happening. What sort of future technologies are there to enable what sort of future learning? So if we see from 1980 onwards, it was standalone PC. From 1990, we moved on to the fixed learn line internet and web browsers, moving on broadband internet, then mobile broadband, and now uh, moving on to the next transformative technology that is AI, 5G, IoT, and AR, having Web 3.0 and Web Metaverse. So you can identify yourself where you are on this curve. So if you want to, whatever I've talked about, if you want to see the actual um, display of all this, so in August 21, 2022, ICRA is uh, uh, doing this uh, 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 workshop, uh, this exhibition in Indira Gandhi Stadium. Uh, where a lot of edtech tools are going to be displayed. So uh, on behalf of ICRA, I'd like to invite all of you to look at the edtech tools which are there. I'd like you and your students to investigate, to find out where these edtech tools can lead you to. And this is a slide which shows the uh, Reliance Geo is about to be launched very shortly. Uh, that is uh, on 15th August, they are planning to launch the, uh, the fifth generation 5G of uh, rollout pan India. So then uh, a, a lot of dimensions are going to change uh, in the area of education, healthcare, agriculture, manufacturing, and e-governance. So the change, bigger change is around the corner. With that, I'd like to thank UGC for uh, inviting me uh, for this lecture. Thank you very much. Over to UGC, Dr. Uh, Gopu Kumar. Thank you, sir. Can you please stop sharing, sir? Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, sir, for the lecture. Now we have several vice chancellors who joined us live. Let us find out if they have any questions. If you have any questions among the participants, please raise your hands electronically. Sir, in your lecture, you have mentioned um, yes. about uh, the edtech tools and dropouts. Yes. Whether it is about, uh, it gives any indication in advance about the dropouts or it helps the students. Correct. It uh, it gives the administrator that who is running the course indications of uh, a student based on his behavior. The AI uh, uh, goes on the behavioral pattern of the student's learning and gives an indication to the administrator that this student is about to drop out. So okay. this is this is one of the uh, uh, let us say the tool which is used by the administrator to gauge the student engagement with the class. As I said, all this can be one can one should go forward and uh, see demos of these tools to find out which tool is more suitable or which tools are suitable for their uh, purpose. couldn't see any uh, questions sir, from the uh, participants. So I would like to thank you, sir. Thank you for a very informative lecture on the tech tools and education and giving an introduction to the participants about the mandate of Quality Council of India and the various tech tools in education. And I thank you once again on behalf of UGC. And I also thank Honorable Vice Chancellor for joining us today and all participants who are watching this program on our YouTube channel and TikTok. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much once again.